As you guys know, August 8th was Kenyan election and President Huru Kenyatta has been declared the winner. Congratulations to the winner of the election. A lot of international observers said that there was no rigging, but I have a lot of questions. First of all, a few days to the election, Christopher Msando, an electoral official in charge of the polling and data analytics, this is someone that was very key to preventing rigging, was found tortured and killed. Who would kill somebody that was supposed to prevent rigging few days to the election? That's somebody's father, that's somebody's husband that was just killed like an animal just because somebody wants to win at all costs. Seriously? And why killed my father? Because of what? Just reveal yourself. Because God is watching you. And then Odinga said that a hacker used the dead man's password, the man that was killed, they used his password to take control of the entire network and that they used that to alter the results. Which is why no one can explain how Kenyatta stayed 11% ahead of opposition throughout. I'm not saying that a lot of people did not vote for Kenyatta. It's possible that majority of people voted for Kenyatta. I don't know. But what I'm saying is that not once did Kenyatta go up to like 12 or 13 or 15% above the opponent. Not once did he come down to like 90. You see what I'm saying? He stayed at 11% above his opponent. And, and that's not, that's unusual. I've never seen anything like that in any election. Also, the electoral body printed 1.2 million extra ballot papers. And some people reported seeing some of the marked ballot papers even before the election. It was circulating 1.2 million extra. Why? And then some voters couldn't find their names on the voters register, but their numbers were assigned to other people. That's not even the biggest issue because that happens in other countries as well. But you know, after the election, there was protest, especially in Matare slum, which is a stronghold of the opposition. And the fact that the police opened fire on protesters, I was shocked. I was like, Kenya. I was really shocked. That first day, police killed four people. Yet, the government said that nobody was killed. Haba. Meanwhile, we saw pictures. We saw pictures of the dead bodies. This is a woman that was covering the body of her son. How do you explain this? <laughs> <laughs> so why would the government lie to us that nobody was killed? They forget that this is the social media age. And then the second day, protesters were killed in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night, police opened fire on protesters. And when journalists went there in the morning, police did not allow them. So nobody knows exactly how many people were killed that night. Opposition members are saying that more than 100 people were killed, but the government of Kenya said it's not true. Including children. Can you guys believe that children were killed? There was a nine-year-old boy, a nine-year-old girl, and also a six-month-old baby that he held tear gas and also that was killed. They throw the tear gas inside and it was so smoky. She can't even breathe. Then the other one came with that stick of them, hit the baby. So we can't ignore that that happened. I'm honestly not happy with this attitude of winning at all costs that we have in different parts of Africa. It's not just in Kenya. Why can't we just let the people's vote count without altering results and especially without spilling blood? It doesn't mean that Kenyatta would not win if the result of the election was not altered because I honestly believe that something went wrong, especially since they killed that guy that was supposed to prevent rigging. I strongly believe we can learn a lot from Ghana and you know, I had high hopes when it came to Kenyan election. Now having said that, the opposition leader, Reyla Odinga, he also did not help matter at all, at all. I understand that this is his fourth time of losing the presidential election. That's very hard. That's very difficult. For you to run four times and not win, but for him to say that his supporters should remain calm, and then he added that, I don't control people. I mean, that's like, you are not being firm enough that people should be peaceful at all costs. Uh, wasn't it 2007 when about 1,000 people were killed in Kenya because of election violence? As a leader, no matter what happens, you have to prevent violence at all costs, even when it's difficult. I can't imagine how he's feeling, but having peace is more important than anything else. So lastly, I'm very happy to see that young people were elected, especially as members of parliament in Kenya, including a 23-year-old guy who is said to be the 
youngest elected member of parliament right now in Kenya. His name is John Paul Mwirigi. He's a student at Mount Kenya University and people are celebrating his election because he's like a regular guy. He didn't even have money to campaign. I heard that he didn't even have money for posters and they said that he was going from door to door to campaign and also he didn't have a car to campaign but he won. I love saying something like that and also three women were elected as governors in Kenya. How wonderful, how wonderful is that? Nigeria, where are you? Seriously? Other African countries are passing us and leaving us behind. In fact, they passed us a long time ago. Several African countries have elected female presidents and female governors. We, what have we done? We have seven female senators. Seven. Seven out of 109 senators. What a shame. And I keep saying that we need more women in politics in Nigeria. Honest women, not just women, but honest women that would fight for what is right. Having said that, congratulations to the winner of the election and also more importantly, I like to express my condolences to those who lost their loved ones, including the man Christopher that was killed shortly to the election. I can imagine what his family members are going through right now. Please accept our condolences and I strongly condemn the fact that the government is denying something that is obvious. But again, you guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real.